Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Beyond Influence. I am Kwame Apia, one of your co-hosts. And today we have a new co-host with us today. I'm very excited to have her on. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Lauren, and I'm the head of talent acquisition over here at Later. I'm really excited to dive into today's conversation. Awesome. So uh, with us today, we are very, very fortunate to have a, a trailblazer in the influencer marketing uh, industry, someone who was way ahead of our time because uh, she did start a company, I think, in 2018 um, and already had it. 2017. 2017. You know, We're and so OG, it. Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go yeah, back. And, and already <laughs> yeah. had it sold before some of us even knew what an uh, Instagram reel was. Uh, so someone who definitely has a lot to contribute to us today. Uh, thank you for being on and welcome, Jesse Grossman. How are you doing today, Jesse? I'm so good. Thank you guys for having me. I've been looking forward to this all day and uh, just happy to be here. Thanks, guys. Awesome. And, you know, we'll, we love to start off with just a little bit of catch up. I know the holiday weekend just came by. Did you do anything fun and special for your holiday weekend? I like lived in the pool. I'm in a very <laughs> unique situation that in Brooklyn, New York, we have a pool. And so I lived in it for the whole weekend with uh, my stepdaughter and pool floaties and our dog giving us eyes being like, you're not going to ask me to come in there, right? Even though we are dying to have her be a pool dog, but she is not. So yeah, we just chilled in the pool. What about you guys? Well, for me, I uh, I went to my my wife's family's cabin in the San Juans. Um, if anyone's ever been to the state of Washington, the San Juans is a must go. I think it's about three or four islands, and I think on at least two or three of them, you can basically stand at the beach and whale watch. So it's pretty incredible. We spent the entire time there. I was in a donut eating contest. Uh, Yes, with about 40 other people. I got second place because my last donut broke into crumbs and I had to try to scoop it. And by the time I was there, the other guy had eaten all of his donut. And so I'm I'm a little sad. I'll be back next year. Uh, but it was an incredible 4th of July for me. How about you, Lauren? I first want to know how many donuts. So <laughs> take question. Yes. That's the real question. <laughs> so the goal was whoever could eat 10 donuts, 10 full-size donuts, uh, the fastest. And so I got about 9.75 and my last quarter broke off. And so I did end up finishing all of it, but I finished it, I think, like one or two seconds after the winner. Well, I'm up here in Canada. So I was uh, celebrating Canada Day on uh, July 1st. So uh, up here in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, I spent it luck lucky enough to have a friend that has a boat. So we spent it uh, driving around Game Bureau Island and spending time in the water, which was really great because it was one of the first kind of sunny, hot days of here in uh, British Columbia. So definitely take advantage of that. And nice to have friends with the boat and not have to be the one to upkeep the boat. So uh, definitely yeah, take are, advantage of that. <laughs> those are good friends. You want to keep those friends. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It is, it is a rule in my friendship book. Always have friends with boats. Um, so let's all make sure we keep that in our in our back pocket. But um, as we get into this today, Jesse, um, I listened to your last episode. I think the episode was, man, in a, something in Atlanta. Made in Atlanta? Remind me. It was with our Atlanta ambassadors. So we just okay. wanted to like explore that, you know, chapter of WIM and we had an mm -hmm. event coming up and, you know, they were like, we're the, you know, we're like the underdog. Like people underestimate us all the time. We're not New York. We're mm -hmm. not LA. And I was like, ooh, tell me more. So <laughs> we just chatted <laughs> with them for a while. It was really interesting. That's awesome. And, you know, before you got into the episode itself, you talked about something very personal, very private. That is something that uh, as I got married and started hanging out with more married people, I realized is like it's quite the journey that a lot of people are going through. So um, you announced something very special. So I, I'm going to hand it off to you and not break the, the news myself. Um, so do you mind great. opening up about that? I announced that we are having a baby and I'm so excited. Every time I say it, I'm so like, ooh, this is so like to get chills every time. Um, yeah. It's been a long time in the making as well, which I've also kind of opened up about on the podcast with the whole, you know, idea that it was easier for me to go through because 
people had shared their struggles to get pregnant and with infertility and all that. And if I can do that for like one person, I would be honored to be able to help them through their journey. So it was like two years in the making and we're having a little, oh, I didn't announce the gender actually. I'll, I'll happy to share on here. We're having a little boy. <laughs> we're very excited. He's going to be an honorary member of Women in Influencer Marketing. <laughs> So we're so thrilled. My my stepdaughter, who is eight and a half and will be nine when he's born, is going to have her first sibling, which is really exciting. Congratulations. What, what month are you due? In December. As of right now, it's like the beginning oh, of Christmas December. Baby. So, yeah, it'll be, I'm hoping it's like right between Thanksgiving and right before Christmas Hanukkah and the holidays. So... Um, yeah, we're just excited. Someone was asking me today, like, how are you doing? Like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I mean, I'm taking naps every day. Like, I'm two years old. I didn't expect <laughs> that. But honestly, like, as, you know, quote unquote bad as some of the symptoms feel, like, honestly, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm showing up. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> like, it just, we, we, it took a long time to get here. So we're just very, very grateful. That is amazing. And I know that a big part of going through an experience is knowing that you have community around you. And so thank you so much for sharing that because I'm sure people are either, you know, pregnant now or trying to conceive. Um, and I think the, the mentioning of, you know, going through the entire process and some issues with infertility, like those are definitely like really, really big points for a lot of people. Um, so you know, there are resources out there. There are people who are going through what you're going through. So definitely, you know, be positive about it. Stay encouraged um, because there's obviously great things on the other side. Uh, there so. are. And also even just mm -hmm. like knowing that there are like non-traditional paths to get to the same place, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm 37, I'll be turning 38 when we have him. And I was like, oh my, you know, they talk about like, if you're over 35, it's like a geriatric pregnancy. I mean, <laughs> the crazy things that people say. And then, you know, Kourtney Kardashian gets pregnant. I think she was like 44. You hear about all these people mm. getting pregnant in their 40s, some of their 50s. Like, I don't want to be, you know, running around in my 60s with like an eight-year-old or something. So <laughs> that's something to think about. But like... I'm also happy that I got to focus on my career for, you know, 30 plus years. I mean, not all 30 years, but you know what I mean? Like for until my 30s and um, and I feel more prepared than ever to have a baby. So if you, if you talk to me in my 20s, I was like self-proclaimed, like didn't want kids actually, mm -hmm. to be very honest with you guys. <laughs> I was like, I don't know about that. It's just like, that's, I don't think that's in my cards. I don't really want that. And then you know, how life goes, like you meet the right person and all that stuff and things sort of change. So did for me at least. Yeah, that is uh that is definitely beautiful. Um, seeing all that come, come together. So I think as we transition to talking a bit more about the influencer marketing and, and career side of things, you know, you got your start quite a while ago and I'd love to just open up a little bit on, you know, how your career got started and how it shaped to being in the field of influencer marketing. Yeah. So I feel like everybody has such a different path. So it's such a good question. It's like very few people, you know, freaking study this in school or um, have, you know, even people to look up to, to say like, oh, I want to emulate, you know, their career path. And mine was certainly windy, but I see the, I see the, the through line. Um, I, I tell people I'm very open. Like I didn't study marketing in school. Like I was a theater major. I was always on the performing side of things. And then I was behind the scenes directing and producing when I moved to New York and I loved it. And um, the transition to influencer marketing was specifically because I ended up representing talent. So I switched over to being a talent agent first for actors. And then at that talent agency, which is like so old school, you guys, like been around since like the 70s. Like they're one of those like, you know, I don't know, a little antiquated uh, talent agencies. I launched their influencer division. So we represented, um, we had a whole roster of like really incredible influencers when like none of them, very few of them were represented at the time. Um, and then I left to start my own agency and sold that like a couple years later. And then the whole while I had had this like passion project, never monetized it at all. Uh, and it was a networking group that we, I named WIM, which is short for Women in Influencer Marketing. And 
that started in 2017. But again, like total passion project. You know, it was it fed into work though. I was always trying to get deals for my clients. I was trying to meet people in this like new industry. And living in New York, there's never been a shortage of networking and groups like that. But I'd go in and tell them what industry I was in, and they're like, "Well, that's cool. Like, I don't know what to do with that." You know what I mean? So. I was like, I need, I want to meet more similar people who like get it. So I've never been that type of person to sort of like sit back and wait for things to happen. I just don't believe they will that way. So we made it happen. So we just invited a bunch of people to events and, you know, we this it dates ourselves, but we, you know, we started a Facebook group back in the day. And um, when I ended up selling the talent agency, that was the point where I was like, I mean, I could go work for someone else again. It had been a while at that point. Or (laughs) I can just like really give this thing a go and like, you know, really give it the time and attention that I had always wanted to, but I never had. Um, So in like at the end of 2020, in the craziest time, is when we like officially launched the membership. And that's like the closest iteration of what this community is today, which is, you know, a networking organization, community more so than anything for women who hire and advocate for influencers. No, that is amazing. I think um, like as we discover the different like areas in which people can really feel support within their careers, um, I think any time that you can take a group and you can advocate for and you can, you know, empower um, and in any way help shape ideas that they're having as well. I think that you're making a mark in your industry. And so I think that that's always a great way to focus things. Now, when you did start your career and kind of, you know, started to shape things, I know, you know, you, you went through going through and starting a company and then selling it. Uh, but through that process, you know, what did you learn about starting a company and especially within this specific industry? Yeah. I mean, I've learned lots of things since then. I learned things going through the process and we can talk for honestly for hours about that. Um, I would say, well, you know, some of the main things I learned are things that are done well, like things that are the most meaningful, the most impactful, and some of the best work you're going to do. They always, It always takes longer than you think it would, that it should. And, you know, it just takes longer. So um, as somebody who's like a little bit more of like on the impatient side of things, that's been <laughs> a big pill to swallow. Um, mm-hmm. My first business that I went into, I, I had two business partners as well. So that was a, an interesting experience. And I've found that since then, I'm a little less trusting, candidly, of, of going into yeah. business with people. It's a really huge commitment. And I went into it fairly blind, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, things didn't quite work out between us. And um, but I learned so much from it. And so now going into, you know, the couple businesses that I have today, because I also have a consultancy, like I've learned that like whoever you bring in, like there should be a trial, a test and learn, a, a long period of time where, you know, in order to earn that trust and and to know that you guys gel and work well together before you know, all that trust is given, um, you know, any, every entrepreneur I've ever met who has their own business, like their business is their baby. Like it's, you put your blood, (laughs) your sweat, your tears into it. And so I get very protective of it. And I think that part of that, like I'll pat myself on the back a little bit is why I have such an incredible team now, because we're just very strategic about who we bring on, who we bring into the fold. And, you know, we want to make sure they're just as passionate about the mission. They're, you know, they see a similar future for what we can become. They're energized in the same way. Um, And if they're not like, that is fine. Of course, it's just not the right fit. So um, yeah, I don't know. Those are a couple lessons I've learned along the way. Yeah. And I find it really interesting how you mentioned that you kind of, it sounds almost like kind of fell into the the influencer marketing space and you had a a less traditional path into, you know, maybe not studying marketing, starting in the theater space, which I'm sure there were a ton of transferable skills and kind of foundational pieces that you learned in in, uh, your early theater days that transitioned into your talent, uh, you know, manager job. And um, I'm curious, um, you said that you were the first to kind of build that influencer um, talent function within uh, that initial agency you worked at. So 
um, what was kind of that need that you saw in the market? Because you were really definitely a trailblazer in terms of, uh, you know, launching, uh, getting an earlier in um, in the space. So, yeah, we'd love to hear kind of how that came to be. Yeah, I'm so transparent about this. Like, I'm not necessarily your ideas person, but I'm a really good <laughs> listener. So my best friend at the time, who had also worked at that same agency, left to go work in casting. And, you know, I we'd just get lunch, dinner, whatever. And I would tell her, I'm like, oh, God, like, the people who work around me, like, they're my parents' age. And they're not going anywhere. And they've been there for, like, 30 years. And at the time, I was, like, 25, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like... I just, where, where do I fit in here? I've worked so many, you know, so many years at that point. I was there for six years um, and I was making, you know, very little money. And I was like, I just, what's the path for me here? And she was the one who said, you know, we're doing all these castings and we're getting these specs where they're looking to cast influencers and we don't even know who to go to because no, these people aren't even responsive. And when they are, they don't know the business side of things. And it could be really interesting for something for you to explore. I mean, I had previously been like, what if I represent circus acts? Well, I'm not even joking. What if I represent comedians? Like I was trying to find a space for myself versus like follow something that I'm like particularly passionate about. I was like, no one represents those people. And I'm like, mm -hmm. do I want to? I actually don't think I do at all. So when she suggested like, you should look into influencers, I was like, that's so interesting. Like it just felt fresh and new and it felt like it had so, so much like open space at the time. This is years ago. Um, and so I explored it. And luckily the company that I worked for was like supportive enough <laughs> of me exploring it. They're like, all right, I mean, do this job full time and, you know, we'll, we'll support you doing this on the side. Um, and then honestly, I just made them more money than they could have ever imagined, honestly. And they had to pay attention. Um, and it was quite the environment of like, su it was such a boys club. I mean, we're talking about like old Hollywood type people. And so me coming in, like at the time I was maybe 27 or something, I was in my twenties and like, you know, they, they were like, eh, well, we'll give her a little, some, you know, some leash to do whatever she wants to play around with and do. And we ended up building something that exists to this day at that agency. And like, it was, you know, sometimes you need a fresh perspective, whether it's young or, you know, inexperienced or whatever it is to, to say like, this is the path, like this is where the, oh, the, the possibilities and the opportunities are. And, um, and I was hungry. I was really hungry. So we made it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. You know, there's a couple things that you said that I really want to revisit. I think the first thing is, you know, knowing your strengths and having awareness like, hey, you're not the ideas person, but you are someone who can take an idea and execute the heck out of it. You know, so I think it's great to find people around us that compliment us in a big way. And then I think another thing that you mentioned is the people around you were solidified in their roles and they weren't going anywhere. Right. And so if you see that there's an opportunity um, or maybe if that opportunity doesn't exist yet, you have to create it, right? Like it's not going to just come find you. And I think that that's something that's really powerful about your story is you saw that you were in this space, you were in this area where there wasn't going to be much opportunity for you going forward. You weren't making as much as you wanted to. You weren't being given as much uh, uh, control or autonomy as you wanted to. And you said, you know what? I'm going to create that. <laughs> and so a lot of things that I love about that, and you've been in this industry for a good bit. And you know a lot about it, you know, and I would like, I would love to know what are some big things that you've seen change along the way since you started? Like, how is it that someone can step into the industry now and make an impact now that it's becoming more saturated? I have just been saying for the past like few years, especially that like the influencer marketing industry really needs to mature. So I feel like for a long time, like at the inception of our industry, there was so much, there was such a boom, like there's so much money being flooded into the industry, you know, creators being like thrown more money than they've ever seen. And was there a ton of ROI on that? Not in most instances and sometimes, but not, it wasn't common. Yeah. And so I think that like nowadays, you know, where, Influencer marketing felt pandemic proof for a long time. I think that a lot of people are finally years later feeling like the rippling effect of 
whether it's like a COVID, you know, response or, you know, just like a response to the economy or, you know, mismanagement of things within a, in a company where people are starting to get let go and people, you know, budgets are getting slashed. And I think that it's like really important that people are just honest and upfront about that because, what we do individually in our respective brands, agencies, like really truly can uplift the entire industry as a whole. You know, that's like really part of the the ethos of WIM. You know, it, it's it's about uplifting the entire community, supporting each other, no matter what seniority you're in. Like you can really make an impact. And, you know, if I do a solid for you now, like I know you'll have my back later. Um, so I think that, you know, one of the things areas of opportunity or for fresh eyes, fresh perspective. But I think people thinking more about the industry as a business, thinking scalability, which is very challenging for a lot of people in influencer marketing because it's so relationship-based, right? So how do you scale a service business, for example? It's not easy if if even possible. How do you scale a relationship business? Same thing. But there are a lot of ways where you can scale it to a certain extent, but still keep the core of what relationships, uh, of what influencer marketing is, which is all about relationships and trust, you know, and selling. And um, I'm also very excited by creators who are more entrepreneurial these days and just thinking about additional revenue streams and additional ways to build businesses. And I'm impressed by the entrepreneurs who are powering the creator economy on the other side of things that don't necessarily consider themselves creators, but they're building really cool tech. They're building, you know, things to just like help elevate what everybody's doing on a day to day. So just thinking about it, like in those terms, uh, approaching the work in that way, I think would make a really positive influence and change on the, on the industry. Yeah. And I, I love that whim is all about in empowering women and females in the influencer marketing space. And, you know, I was, I was looking, uh, through, through your website and seeing the different, you know, brands and companies that you partner with. Um, how do you kind of go about choosing what, partners or uh, businesses to, to partner with? So it's a great question. And, you know, in different ways, I mean, we, you know, I'll give you a little peek behind the scenes, I guess, if you guys are interested, because I know some creators listen to this podcast, I'm sure, and um, just business folks. So, you know, we monetize it a couple different ways. We monetize through membership, uh, but we also monetize through sponsorship. So I never in a million years, a girl who started out as a talent agent for so many years, never imagined like myself or my company having sponsorships. It just was very foreign to me. I love being on the other side of things, negotiating those deals and facilitating them. Um, so now we have a team of salespeople who go out to, you know, tech companies who go out to, we've had lawyers sponsor us in the creator economy. We've had like, all sorts of types of businesses who just want to get in front of our community. And our community is incredibly niche, right? It's not even just like marketers. It's influencer marketers. It's not all influencer marketers. It's women in influencer marketing. We do have men in the group, but that's another, another thing. But you know, if people want to sponsor us, people could want to sponsor any community, no matter how niche you are. Like There's totally a market, a viable market for you to sell to. So when people say like, oh, I don't know if I could ever get you know, a sponsor for my very niche community, I'm here to tell you it's completely possible. Um, you just got to know what you're selling, you know, and you got to really know your community. You got to keep them as engaged as possible. And, um, you know, the more that you can actually influence them, you know, to, to buy certain things and to trust your recommendations, the better. Um, but yeah, we, we pick companies because some of them sponsor us. And, you know, when we get companies that aren't a good fit, it's very obvious. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's also partnerships where we've started them and halfway through, I'm just like, this isn't working. <laughs> this isn't working. And to not be afraid to 
pull the trigger in a very polite, respectful way. Um, because like we, you know, we've entered into relationships for a whole year and a lot can change in a year. <laughs> a lot, a lot can change. So, you know, being, I think one of the beauties of having a small business or being an entrepreneur is the ability to pivot pretty quickly um, versus having to, you know, go through red tape and bureaucracy of a large company. And so the faster you're able to pivot based on whatever you're observing, the more that your company will just benefit from it. Yeah. And I, I love that you've built this community where, you know, people know what they're entering into. It's women in influencer marketing. It's uh, really finding that niche community for a connection. And um, I imagine that you're probably quite like protective of that community and, and maintaining the integrity of what you've really built, uh, which is incredible. Um, do you feel like, or, or how do you feel that maybe brands and agencies could better support women influencers or women in influencer marketing? Is there anything that you feel like brands and agencies could be doing differently? I mean, how much time do we have? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, look, I just think that there, there are a lot of voices that should be heard and you can define that in so many ways. Um, And I just think that like, not just hearing those voices, but, you know, really partnering with people to understand like, what is the best way to have that message out? How can I support that message getting out? Like, and just making it more of a partnership. I understand brands are paying bills, brands are, you know, paying the paycheck. I understand, of course, I've, I've worked on that side. So like, I understand, but what I can just say is, you know, the best sort of partnerships, whether it's campaigns or less traditional partnerships that happen, the ones that are just so good are the ones where like it doesn't feel prescriptive. It doesn't feel like I hand to do a script for you to to read, <laughs> you know, like um, and those that are thinking outside the box, like I've loved seeing some really cool activations these days with like in-person experiences. I think like in a post-COVID world, people are like really excited to get you know, back in person, I've, I'm like such a homebody. And if I'm even wanting to go out and hang with people, like I know other people are, cause I'm just such a homebody. So I'm just excited for people thinking outside the box more. There's such a long way to go. I'm like the biggest critic of our industry as much as like, I love it. Um, but I just want to see us all succeed. So, um, yeah, going off on a tangent, hope that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Any and all words and information are helpful for sure. So we appreciate it all. And I think with all of the partnerships that you've now forged with the people that you've met along the way and the companies and organizations that you've gotten to work with, since we're talking about doing things the right way, have you had anybody who has just done it so great that you're like, this is a memorable experience? Mm. I've definitely had a few. I've been very fortunate. And like, those are the people that I'm like, can we continue? (laughs) Can we move (laughs) forward? Can we keep it? Can we do this again? Um, Yeah. I mean, one that comes to mind are just, you know, human relationships that have just like continued to blossom over the years. Like someone that I partnered with one time and um, I went back to her and was like, I'm working with like a competitor. I mean, I'll tell you the story. I was like, I'm working with a competitor of yours. And like, I would just honestly rather work with you. <laughs> like I, I can easily just like take a paycheck from them, but like I it is like I'm endorsing this company and I would so much rather endorse you. I believe in what you're doing. I've hired them personally uh to work with and like I just really believe in her. And you know, we both are in Brooklyn, we're both moms, like I don't know, we just connected. So, you know, that's one thing that comes to mind for one uh instance, and then another is just like there's a company that I worked with um, the past like six months where it was the opposite of prescriptive. <laughs> like they were like, all right, we just want like I'm, I lo- I'm like a LinkedIn nerd. So I love like people are like, yeah, I'm an Instagrammer. I'm like, I'm a LinkedIner. Like, I don't know what to say, but like <laughs> that's my place because it's, you know, you could be interestingly enough, you could be creative on there. Um, but, you know, it's all professional and business related. So I, I love diving into business anyways. On there um, and in our Slack community, he was like, yeah, like, we'll give you a real, like, a topic and just, like, tell us your opinions on it. And they were really thought-provoking topics that are just, like, really timely. They're, like, pain points for people in the industry. And they, um, I think, I mean, they really resonated with me and and with other people as well. So I think that just, like, really addressing things head-on is important. When I used to represent influencers, I remember so many brands were like, oh, I don't know if their brand's safe enough or like, 
oh, I don't know if they, like we did a little bit of, of digging and they once three years ago posted about, I don't know, fill in the blank that was like fairly innocuous, but they weren't willing to take the risk. And I think that like, that's fine. Like there are some brands that are just these legacy brands that will always be that way. You do you. But I, I think in the world that we live in, more people than not just really appreciate like just real like candor and, you know, just people being real about things, how they feel, what they're observing, things like that. So the more that partners can just like really truly encourage that no matter how off brand, not off brand, but like how unbrand safe it is or, you know, I, I think that it'll just naturally get a better reaction. I think, you know, we have to think about like, what's our goal here? <laughs> like, what are we all here to do? And if the goal is to reach a bunch of people and get people talking and, you know, make an impact, then, you know, that's a good way to do it. <laughs> it's just be real about whatever the topic is and and have a way that people can relate to what you're talking about. With trying to, you know, stay authentic and also have great true relationships that build and and are genuine, but also do create benefits, right? On both ends. Uh, I think that that's, I've always thought that that's the best way to handle business. I've always thought that that's also the best way to thrive, right? Because if you both are in it and you're both enjoying and you're both happy, like good things just happen, <laughs> you know? 100%, so I'm a percent, a hundred percent. But I'll also say like, I don't know if anyone else mm -hmm. has this issue, but like, mm -hmm. I've also like hired people like in my personal life, like my stepdaughter's like tutor or like, I don't know, just like people that we've like h hired in my, in our personal life. But we like, there's like a business relationship there. And then I'm like, I kind of want to invite them to like my baby shower. Is that weird? Like I kind of want to like invite them over to like swim at the pool. Like, and I used to, I don't, I bring that up because I used to be in my like early career, incredibly black and white about that sort of stuff and be like, I do not mix business with pleasure. I like, I'm, there's a clear line, especially I think as a woman, sometimes it's like, it used to be very important and very top of mind to be able to, to do that. But I've, I found that like, you know, we started off this conversation talking about how I'm going to have a baby. Like I wouldn't talk about that <laughs> normally, like in a business sort of environment. But I think that you're spot on, which is like the more that you can just be real and authentic and just like really, ex like really put your true self out there. Like that's how connections are made. And I'm like, oh my God, like Lauren was awesome. Kwame was awesome. Like in the future, I'm like, how do I partner with them on something because like we had a great conversation if we just like sat here and were robots it wouldn't be as memorable <laughs> you know i couldn't agree more and, and i think you know there's there is so much content out there and and it's really easy to tell when something is not authentic or when someone is really showing up as themselves and talking about something that they're passionate about whether it be a, a product a service a um you know a company a brand uh it's you know really important to to come across as authentic and, and, and people can tell, I think it, it's, uh, it's becoming, uh, you know, very clear. So, but I can also talk to the elephant in the room, which is like, you, like, it's the internet y'all like, you're going to piss people off too. <laughs> you know, like I have like a microcosm of a following I'm smaller than a microcosm of a following. And I have like had sleepless nights about something that I said that pissed somebody off and that snowballed. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I can't even imagine what like an actual influencer goes through. You have to have a real thick skin. You're always going to have people who don't like what you say. Like there's always going to be a camp of people. You have to be okay with that in order to be in this business. But it's interesting because like for, for myself, like I used to be very uncomfortable putting myself out there and was just given so much advice from people that I really respect, which is, you know, maybe you're not a typical like a fashion influencer, or a beauty influencer, like I barely have makeup on right now, but I'm like, I would like to be able to have my business thrive. And in this day and age, no matter what your business is, it's very beneficial to feel comfortable being out there, putting yourself out there, which for some of us introverts is like not comfortable. Um, but the benefits are outweigh it, you know? And, um, I just, I think that, uh, having the opportunity to share things that are like genuinely important to you, uh, or meaningful to you sort of like got me out of my head. Right. I'm like, what do I talk about? And it's like, 
just talk about what matters to you and don't be afraid what people think because you're always going to have people that disagree on everything. You could say the sky is blue and people are like, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it is not blue. And I'm like, okay, like I, you can't yeah. win. So, you know, just getting comfortable and all that, which is a process, but, um, it's very beneficial, I think. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you, I mean, <laughs> I feel like, you know, opinions have gotten significantly more positive and consistent over my journey as a as a creator or as an online presence or whatever, whichever way you want to put it. I think one thing that like will always stay is just the heavy, just volume and, and diversity in opinion. Right. And th that's one thing about the internet now more than it's ever been is that so many more people have access to it. And so many more people have access to each other, you know? And so I think about this all the time because I used to get really upset. Not even, like I, yes, I get upset with stuff that comes on, you know, is written on, in my comments and things, but I've actually grown pretty thick skin. I either just delete the comment or sometimes I just don't even care anymore. <laughs> and it took a while to get there, but I sometimes get upset with like opinions that people have on other people. And I see it in their comments and I want to like say something, but then I think about the volume. There's just, there's, billions of people with access and they're from all different parts of the world. They were brought up in a very, very specific way. And so somebody all the way from the right side of the world will not think the same way as somebody all the way from the left side of the world. So you have to be okay with someone having a different opinion. And even if it makes you angry inside and it's dead wrong, just move on. Because at the end of the day, like, the internet's the internet. Once you put that phone down, you can walk away, live your life, go grab a daiquiri, whatever works for you. <laughs> <laughs> spicy margarita. <laughs> You're like, the worse the comment, the spicy of the margarita. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Up the spice. <laughs> Up the spice. A hundred percent. Like, and, you know, you have more good to put in the world than trying to change someone's mind who you don't even know. You know, like, it's just assume it's not going to work, you know, and there's so many other, there's so much more good to, to put out there, but you know, look like having a platform is having, a uh, uh, like a microphone, you know, it's having the opportunity to really put some good out there in the world. And, you know, we all define what that is in different ways, right? Some people just want to entertain and that's a lot of good. <laughs> you know, some people want to teach. That's amazing. Like that we define it in different ways. But I do think if you don't take advantage of that opportunity, whether you're literally influencing one person, no joke, or like the hundreds of thousands of people, like it's just such a missed opportunity. And I think you can translate that into life, <laughs> you know, like no matter what it is, but you know, it is, it's a huge opportunity to be able to impact people or reach people. So like take advantage of it. Yeah. And, you know, with, with your community really focused on supporting women, are there any opportunities that you really see in the influencer marketing space for women in particular? I mean, all of them. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, all the opportunities. All of them because you can do anything because we're amazing, Lauren. You're amazing. I'm amazing. Kwame's amazing as well. But, you know, look, I have, I'm here amplifying women and all the opportunities. I, you know, I just... I, I came up with, you know, not great mentors. I'm always the first person to say that. Like, I was unfortunate in that way. I, you know, I, I didn't have great parents growing up. I didn't have great family life and I didn't have great mentors. My mentors, quote unquote, were, were catty, you know, women who were like, there's, you know, one opportunity and it's you or me. <laughs> and so I was taught incorrectly. I was taught that this is the only way. And in the back of my mind, I was always like, there has to be some other way of doing this. Like, I didn't necessarily have the answer, but like, I questioned it. I was like, this just sucks. Like for all of us, like this is our, you know, this isn't going to get us anywhere. Um, and so, you know, like, again, like if you have an idea, you got to run with it. Because what I found by running with this idea 
where, you know, we're networking group that like all supports each other. It's not like, you know, there's a class of, you know, the, the senior ones you emulate and the junior ones you haze, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it was the opposite of that. It was like, we all have something to learn from each other. It's a very unique industry that like you can be incredibly successful and be young in age. And I think that's a wonderful thing. At 37, I'm like, worried that I'm going to age out of this industry in some (laughs) short period of time, you know, and that's something real to think about. I think that like an open mindedness and and open mindedness to learn and to keep learning and like that enjoyment of learning won't have me age out of it. But that's what I'm telling myself. I hope it's the truth. (laughs) Uh, But yes, I think that, you know, whatever you want to achieve professionally uh, is totally possible. And I am just excited to just see uh, you know, more forward thinking, you know, people at the forefront of, you know, great companies. Yeah, that that is amazing. Um, and one thing that you said that I really love is like, there's no senior, there's no junior, because like when I think about influencing, um, I think about people who got their start, you know, less than a year ago trying to become influencers who have learned so much where people who've been in it for five, six, seven years might not know that thing, right? We all have something to offer each other. So if you go in with an open mind and mindset, you're you're looking to learn and also give. So that means you're hopefully going to learn and give from the other person as well. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a really important way to make sure that we're all continuously growing. And as we get closer to the end of this conversation, there's a couple things that I wanted to know from you before, you know, we call it a day. So one thing is you've been through a lot of different parts of this journey. You've been in someone's organization. You've started your own organization. You've sold an organization. You've started a new one. Um, are there any, I say, I guess like any, any things that you would tell yourself if you looked back um, in the beginning of this that, you know, you would maybe change or do differently? Is there anything I would do differently? Yeah, that's a great yeah. question. Um <sighs> I want to answer it thoughtfully. Um, you know, I, I want to sit here and be like, no, <laughs> you know, like I don't regret a thing. But yeah, they're they're deaf. I mean, hindsight is a powerful thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I I would trust myself a little. More. I would trust myself a lot more because um, that's one thing that what you just said reminded me of, which I think is like a beautiful thing of like the next generation, which is. I feel like they're, I don't know, I'm a millennial. So like, I feel like when I was coming up in my career, there was this like distrust of myself because, well, the assumption is that everybody more senior than me knows everything and so much more than I do. And so I just have to sit here and like soak it all in and get to this point that I've worked hard enough to like get to that level and I, I feel as if there's been a shift in that. And there and the shift, I think, is it comes down to trusting yourself, right? I like I'm an like egoless person. I, I think we can all learn from each other. So I certainly don't would never say, like, you know, you come into the room, you like own it, like, you know, you don't have anything to learn here. But I do think that there's a healthy amount of trust in yourself that could really help you just progress faster. Like I just think back to all those years when I sat timidly and, you know, waited for this knowledge to suddenly impart in myself to be able to like say, all right, now here's your, here's your permission, go in your career. And I just think to, if I would have trusted myself or been more vocal, earlier on, I just feel like I would have been even further ahead than I am now and therefore able to achieve even more. So again, that's the impatient part of me coming out. (laughs) But yeah, I would just, I would trust myself more and be, try to be more comfortable in expressing my ideas and my concerns um, and just, you know, expressing myself more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that that obviously is a really important part of all, just about anything we do is like the confidence in yourself, knowing and reassuring yourself as you go through your journey that like, I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. Like, I know what I'm doing. And I think uh, a part of that comes, um, or the difficulty in having that 
comes from a little bit of imposter syndrome. And I think we all experience it. And the cool thing that I've learned about imposter syndrome is you like anybody who is growing at a rapid rate has it right. Uh, you know, we talk to even, even our CEO, Scott, right. He sometimes talks about being put in this seat where it's like, Oh my gosh, like, am I doing everything right? And so like, Everyone's going to have imposter syndrome as they're going through their journey. If you're not having it, you're probably not growing fast enough, which means you need to make sure you're pushing yourself a little bit more. And hey, in certain parts of life, that's okay if you don't have it because you just want to relax because we do deserve a break as well. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, you know, but, uh, you know, to, to wrap things up here, one important question that I want to ask is as you've gone through this journey and you see things coming ahead of you, where do you see influencer marketing going in the next, you know, five years or so? Like, and it doesn't even have to be five. What's what's the next one year? Because this thing grows so quickly, right? I was going to say five years. Oh my gosh, that's like a lifetime <laughs> away. Um, I'm here for it. But uh, yeah, I mean, the next year, like, I, you know, it's it's a really hot, hard and uh, challenging job market right now. So I've seen like a lot of folks like in our community, friends of mine who, you know, were part of layoffs due to no fault of their own. Such talented people who are struggling to to find their next role. Um, so what I would like to see selfishly are more of these incredible people go into business for themselves and not wait around for these opportunities. And I've seen a really interesting resurgence of folks who are part of our community and they're like, I'm going to be a consultant. I'm going to go off and start my own agency, small business, you know, fill in the blank. But, you know, there's this mystery around it and this fear of, you know, I, I literally had someone today who she's like, you know, I'm used to making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Like, do you think that that's possible if I work for myself? And I'm like, I'm never a hundred percent type person, but I'm going to sit here and knowing you, I'm like, yes, a hundred percent. And you should be making more than that because also let's be real. You got to now pay for your health insurance. You have overhead, you have expenses, things like that. But like, there's so much more opportunity. Like I work for myself. My fiance is a, you know, a W2 employee and he does really well for himself. And he's like, you're going to be the bread maker, you know, like you, because there's just so much more opportunity as an entrepreneur. The sky really truly is the limit versus waiting around for somebody to give you a raise. So I think that a lot of people get in their own head, understandably so, about the fear of like all the startup things that have to occur. And, you know, also a lot of these people are getting into service businesses, which I, I think I mentioned earlier, it's just a difficult business to be in. Um, if you're looking to really scale it or make a good amount of money, it's always about the, you know, chasing next client, et cetera, et cetera. But the long and short of it is, I hope <laughs> that I see more people going into business for themselves and small businesses really thriving. And, um, I think it's an exciting addition to our industry. So I, I want to see more of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's why the network and community that you've built is so important. Like imagine if this existed, you know, back in 2017, 2018, when you were, uh, you know, in those kind of earlier stages of, of developing, you know, the influencer uh, talent function where you were and, um, you know, just having that community to bounce ideas off of and like, are my dreams too big? Absolutely not. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that's why the community that you've built is so impactful. So it's been great to learn about it. Thank you. Where it's, it's all about the community, truly. Like the women who are in it are phenomenal. And I, it's just, it's great being in community with them. That is awesome. And uh, with that being said, it seems like we're at a pretty good point right now. Um, uh, Jesse, do you have any final words for our, uh, our listeners today? I mean, watch Love is Blind. No. <laughs> so I have to throw that in there. I'm a huge fan. Love the show. Um, yeah, so no. Um, on a serious note. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, like, check out Wim if what we're saying sounds interesting to you. We also have a podcast. I hope this is okay to self-promote. Um, you know, it's a women in influencer marketing podcast. Wim is our industry. But also, like... I am happy to be a resource to anyone. So I'm super active on LinkedIn. So if you just want to like pop into my, I'm that nerd, that LinkedIn, my LinkedIn DMs, connect with me uh, on there. I'm always happy to, to say hi and share info. So I hope to hear from you. And thank you guys for having me on. Yes, <laughs> Watch Love is Fun. 
<laughs> it's okay. You, you know, you can watch Love is Blind, just skip season four. Um, but... <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> uh, but with that being said, man, it has been an incredible conversation today, Jesse. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and Lauren, Thank you so much for stepping in as our co-host today. This was a great conversation. There's so much to learn. So I'm really excited to share this with all of our listeners. Uh, We're going to wrap it up with a yes. You should watch Love is Blind, especially season four, because it's the best one. (laughs) Do go out, find Jessie on LinkedIn, add her and definitely ask for some information because she's got a lot to give and I'm sure that she's ready to give and also learn from you as well. So, Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. We will see you next week on Beyond Influence. Bye-bye.